for the shop report with What up, sports fans? Welcome to the Shop Report. I'm Barbershop Jay. I'll be your host for the day. Here's what's happening. The number to call if you're up and around, you're out and about, and you want to give us a shout, area code 267-687-0026. Once again, that number is area code 267-687-0026. And as always, we'd like to remind the folks out there that the Shop Report is now being powered by none other than the fine folks at Rocket Digital Media. It's the one-stop shop for all your digital marketing needs. You can look them up on Facebook at RDM Detroit, or you can go to their website, rocketdigital.net. That's R-O-C-K-I-T digital.net, and tell them to be as Jay sent you. Joining us on the p program today is none other than my cat from the NYSA. Oh, I thought you was going to introduce yourself, Brother Richard. You know what I'm saying? Because, I mean, you know, I'm well, waiting for you, you know, to do the dog pound. In because the... I want to tell the audience how honored I, I as usual, how I, I always honored I am to be on the show. Oh, but please. I also want to tell you, the dog pound is 83. Let's get it cracking. Oh, oh, oh wow. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, should I say joining me from the <laughs> from NYC, a.k.a. Rucker Park? Save it. And on the other side of the ledger, we got my man from up north, Joey James, a.k.a. Double J, tell the people what you say. Additionally, what else is north is the Browns record at 8-3. and three. Mathematically impossible to finish the season with a losing record. Thank you. Wow. You came up with that all by yourself, huh? Hmm, okay. Well, um, <clears throat> now that we got all of that, the pleasantries, I should say, out the way, let's get into some of these NFL storylines. We only got one for y'all today, but we got a few underneath that one that we'd like to discuss with you. And, of course, first off, as we were just talking, the Cleveland Browns are 8-3. and three. Can you believe it? Uh, you're going to have yes, to. Yes, we can. Yeah, because like Bill Parcells said, you are what your record says you are. So they 8-3. and three. Yeah, you know, kudos to thee. But guess what? So are the Tennessee Titans, 8-3. and three, And they got a showdown with the Browns next week. Brother Rich, what's going to happen, man? Titans, Browns, playoff implications no. all up and through it. We don't know. I'm, I'm not going to go out there and say I know what's going to happen. What I will say, though, is that for the first time in a very long time, the Browns are playing a very meaningful game late into the season. While, uh, pardon me, uh, the Cowboys, I believe, are home, finished, pretty much finished, in the a- uh, NFC League, while many other teams who were bandied about as potential uh, juggernaut, somebody on this platform mentioned some team in Buffalo, Someone was trying to get us to believe they're the up-and-coming rise. Then we heard about the Jaguars. Then we heard about the potential. Man, did nobody say nothing about the Jaguars? Oh, the stop. And the Eagles. Stop oh, we, making we stuff up. But this is the first oh, time did nobody say nothing about the Jaguars? Man, stop it. Properly. Stop that it. team right there stop in it. Ohio who, has, who continues to improve year after year oh now you straight oh no 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 those are lies those are lies they have not improved year after year after year they they're much improved this year stop it they're much improved much improved. yeah this year but they don't say over the years because that's that's not true but they've been improving the team has been improving man the team was six make improvements he had we we had a down year last year with the addition of all. Okay, that well they don't say for but years. But now that settling, like we check the tape. Oh, we here we go. The check the tape. The that once the ta- the talent settled in, as it has, the team and the 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 the, uh, the crew are performing uh-huh. as anticipated. Yeah. And Baker is the leader that we hoped he would be. He may not be the most skilled and most gifted quarterback, but he has the intangibles and he has the skill set. And he has the leadership uh, potential and ability that we see on display week in and week out, taking them in and out of situations and rallying the team and the players rally around him. And we got a good, solid core on defense. 
So I expect us to take care of our business and be nine and three and, and make all the Dallas Cowboys fans like you uh, a little bit more upset. Yeah, right. Save it. Um, anybody who is, uh, how can I say this? Mm, has any wherewithal can look at the Browns and see that they're much better than they were a year ago and all that other good stuff that you mentioned in there. But all of that, you know, that outlandish stuff, you know, I wish I had a uh, a button I could hit. And, you know, again, we we, we getting there. I'm, I'm saving all of this up. Talking about check the tape. Y'all don't want me to check the tape. Double J, what have you to say about Aiden Thre from your Cleveland Browns, that is? And how long you been a Browns fan, by the way? Ten minutes? But go ahead. I'm sorry. We got you. Well, what? I'll always tell in comparison to our Browns aficionado and thank you very much because I know you're not referencing Brother Rich on that. No, no, there. thank you very much. I appreciate that. Oh, I get credit on this program. You've been sipping the eggnog early. Just you know, Santa ain't here yet. I Man, you still got. Oh, it is December. Sorry. Go ahead. Continue December first. I see you in the kind of yeah. festive mood. We're getting to the particulars here. Oh, okay. They are in great shape to to make that postseason appearance that our historian has pointed out hasn't happened since uh, I believe Bill Belichick uh, was was the coach. Was yes, manning the the reins. Mm-hmm. There. Yeah. And now, despite our resident historian, he still uh, he claims, Brother Rich, that he's bald headed now and he does not want the wind to blow through his scalp. And that's why he declined <laughs> the invitation. For the, for the oh, wow. To drop out. Wow. Okay. So that's what we're doing here now. So I tell you something in the strictness of confidence and you blast it out for the world to see here. Okay. I see. Oh, okay. I see. Now the kid gloves are off. Yeah. Like Deontay Wilders. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I get gloves coming off, baby. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. At the end of the day, uh, were, were you done? Can I say something now or no? I wish Gully. If Gully oh, if you, no, no, no. Oh, you're oh, not I've done? I've only just begun. Oh, well, okay, well, you know. I want to point out the con- league. Continue you with know, your soliloquy, with Stephen team. A. Let us know when somebody you're else can get a turn. <laughs> Maybe three times if you include these historian fans within this fan base that demand perfection. That's impossible. Additionally, you have to win twice I can, because the league itself is going to make it incredibly difficult for you to do so. Uh, you can take a look at a very questionable Olivier Vernon helmet to helmet call. The point that I'm making here is. Uh, why'd you leave out the Kareem Hunt first down? The dog pound. Why'd you leave out the Kareem Hunt first down? That was a first down. Well, of course it was. Yeah, it was a first down. It, it just, you're further, yeah, you're, you continue to prove my point here that by hook or by crook, this team is going to get to the promised land. Oh, boy. Here and go. It is, it's about time that everybody you know, faces facts here and, and begins to, to start drinking the Kool-Aid. That's all. Okay. all right. okay, well, I'll tell you what. The reports are coming out of Berea, Berea, that um, they're trying to find a way not to give him that uh, that extension or that rookie, whatever that is, that extra, some kind of monies. If he plays well throughout for the rest of the season, then they, I guess they sign him long term to a maybe longer deal or something or another. I forget the particulars, but whatever it is, he's he's playing to prove something. But no matter to me, no matter how good he does, they're gonna find a way to uh, oust him. I I believe if they don't, I'll be shocked. Yeah, the reports that I'm getting. Well, oust him or not, he's proven himself and he's going to get his money. So, well, I, oust I, him or not, he's done his thing and he's proven his, he's done his thing. I'm all I'm all for a player getting his money. Oh, please don't 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 go there. I didn't said uh, you want to talk about check the tape. <laughs> we don't need. I'm all for anybody getting a, in their month <laughs> in their month getting a. Uh, see, I can't even get it out. Bree, 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 bree. Yeah, yeah. I, I, all I'm gonna say is this. Hey. But this is not about Baker Mayfield, sir. This is about, as Double J was pointing out, people need to admit that this team has arrived. Whether or not management likes them or the Cleveland press likes them or the, even the Cleveland fans like him as an individual, this team itself has arrived, and people need to admit that. What? because You need to I tell them. What's, what's interesting, 
I you need to tell them because they, huh? they you need to let them know because they oh my gosh well, i'm saying it on this platform i'm not on those oh platforms. okay got gotcha. you okay i'm saying it on this this platform matters okay. i'm saying it here because what they, this team needs it's just do dessert this team has arrived just as double j pointed out to us it's arrived it's arrived in defense it's arrived on offense it's arrived in terms of a brand and what we don't hear enough of, and I'm sure I don't necessarily watch mainstream media, but with what we don't even hear enough of, as I follow people like Shannon Sharp on, on Twitter, I don't see enough or hear enough commentary about the fact that while they were ridiculed last year for not living up to expectations, this year when the team is in fact living up and exceeding expectations, we are not hearing much about them. We're still trying to hear about what they want for Brady and what uh, the Bills. And we hear on this platform some person living in Columbus talking about the Bills, some person living in uh, Dallas talking about we have to hear about the Cowboys every weekend. And, and, and well, who because, lives in Dallas? Fortunately, they're not in it, so we don't have to deal with them. Okay, got you. But who lives in Dallas? Uh, exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm oh, saying? Well, I mean, you, I know one you, of the shows. Your son was in the school. We, 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 your son was on, and he was at the. We were talking about the school, and and uh, uh, Dallas came in. And, and you, know, uh, you know, you always talk about the no. Cowboys, if any, if, on and off air, you no, know, please. Dallas comes from you at Double J. <laughs> you don't hear me saying nothing about no Dallas. Well, we, well, we, we what we've seen, uh, you know, a, a postcard from you know again. The return address was one kettle drive. I I don't know. Oh, was it? Oh, it, I don't know. Seen it? No, no, it wasn't. It was thirty six forty two Kane's Way. <laughs> Get it straight, man. Anybody that know me know I'm only team I'm sticking up for is the Miami Hurricanes. That's it. You know what I'm saying? Everybody else, they get a little bit of conversation. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they might get a nine later or something. But uh, the only body who get to sit at the table is the Miami Hurricanes. Hello. But I will say this about the 8-3 and three Cleveland Browns. It is what it is. I don't care who it is that's in front of them. They ain't played nobody. Okay. They didn't make the schedule, though, right? We can't use that argument. We don't use that argument against anybody else. So why would we use that argument against the Cleveland Browns? They right there. They got the top wild card spot. Woo. Well, I mean. Hang on a second. With, with that point being made, they're, they're playing the same teams within the division that have the same, uh, again, Pittsburgh with being undefeated. Baltimore, you know, again, very much neck and neck with them. And nobody's using that as the rationale as to why they are where they are. Additionally. And it's Cleveland people. Every excuse this year, unlike last year, to pack it in when your number one receiver goes out. Now you're going to this game. Again, this is the same Jags team that gave Green Bay quite a bit of a scare there. And so to be able to, without Miles Garrett, without Greedy Williams, again, you have excuses to make why you could let, you know, find one in the lost column. They let, didn't. Let me, they let, showed up. Let me Was tell you. Perfect? Yeah, go no. ahead. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Well, then I'll say oh, no. again that was ultimately the point there. Yeah, you're good to go. Yeah, they. Uh, I will listen. I will give the Browns credit for this. I've seen on more than one occasion throughout the years, three games so far it stood out to me: the Raiders game, the games without Chubb, and this game the other day. Regardless of opponent, I've seen the Browns. Matter of fact, this is the first time I've seen the Browns since that I can recall since 99 that I've seen them win those types of games. Now, they lost to the Raiders. True that. True that. But after that fact, or after that, the fact is, I should say, they won those games. Anybody, this is what I was trying to point out to the people that was going back and forth with me. That thread was probably about 65 weeks long. I said, listen, you cannot deny that they would find a way to lose the games you think they they, they supposed to win, so to speak. And they're winning them games. How can you not acknowledge that? How did you watch that game Sunday? And all you got out of it was Baker ain't, I'm telling you, it, that it kind of irked me. And that because he uh, and he missed two throws, that really really bothered me. I said, "You only are, you all are only seeing what you want to see. I don't do selective. I don't do selective. Show me all of the evidence, then I'll make my assessment. Because I will tell you something else that the guy ain't doing. 
that everybody had a problem with, that anybody that's a fan of the Browns and Bakers should have a problem with. He was giving the ball away in rapid, at a rapid pace. When's the last time he threw an interception? Oh, crickets, yeah. And guess what else? Back. Hugh Jackson, and I'm telling you right now, we don't really do this on this program because that's not how we are. We all about what's right and against what's wrong. But people told me, man, you so hard on the brother, man. You're a brother. I said, man, I, what make a dude? You, don't go there with me. It's can you do the job or can't you? Period. Hugh Jackson, Todd Haley, and Freddie Kitchens tried to have this guy playing beyond what his strengths are at this moment. All right? He don't need to be chucking the ball 77 times a game to satisfy the fantasy owners and sports center top 10 folk. Stefanski, to his credit, as I mentioned in that post, has put the dude in a position to where his strengths stand out. When you put a guy in a position where his strengths stand, his strengths stand out, excuse me, it gives him or buys him time for his weaknesses to become strengths. And that goes for who, regardless of who you like or who you don't like. Regardless of sport, you all are soccer aficionados. Can you not take what I said and find somewhere that it's applicable in soccer? Hockey? Absolutely. Golf? Okay. So I'm not being biased here. I'm being truthful. Than being truthful. You all think I'm bad. You all should have heard some of these Cleveland fans. Double J, I think I can go back through through the thread and tag you in because there was a post, and bear with me, I, I think I might be able to find it. I think I might. Where when I mentioned about the Bakers, he, he, listen, at the end of the day, he's not turning the ball over. Something he had a penchant for. The last four, or five, six, seven games. Yeah, I, I, but both the top, were they? Was the, I'm sure this was the, the complaint then. It had to have been about his inaccuracy on certain throws. There was one specifically in the first half that uh, he he had a little bit of pressure and he missed someone wide open. I don't know if it was Hooper or, um, but there was just someone there, and I I recall just seeing either Hunt or Chubb just throw their hands on their head that they couldn't believe he had missed somebody wide open uh, in the end zone there. Uh But it's got to be a lot. It's got to be hands down with uh, to do with, with inaccuracy on, on certain throws. But then again, so he is a little inconsistent there. Yes. But you're, you're are without Beckham. You, you have Landry who's going to get, you know, not only is he a, a great receiver, but, that also implies that the opponent knows that and it's going to make it ever more challenging to uh, to, to get it to him. Um, as I talk about with Hooper and with the tight ends as a whole, it, you know, you've had kind of a, a carousel there with, with folks being in and out of the lineup. Um, and then, of course, because of the, the loss of Beckham, you have in no preseason, as you've pointed out, you, you don't have a lot of rapport and rhythm with these other guys, people's Jones and, and some of the others. So it's going to take time. And it, I could use that same example with Carson Wentz right now, because as soon as Alshon Jeffrey went down, well, we've seen how their season went. So it, a lot of that has to do with timing and, and timing's really everything when it comes to this sport from the quarterback position and making throws. So I, I'm not going to, I'm not, gonna put a lot of stock in that and listen you summed up what i basically i tried to tell the people let me say two things again i gotta be honest when i when when, after i watched that game there were two things that came I, i took away from that game one you factor in all the adversity that they've had to deal with this year, as there have been many other teams in the NFL. Of course, they're not the only one, especially all of us have been, of course, with COVID or whatnot. But then you add to that, the, of course, the injuries and so on and so forth. But in particular, the adversity that they've had to deal with. This is the first time I've ever seen, a, not ever, the first time I've seen a Browns team since 99 deal with the adversity in the manner in which they are dealing with adversity. 
you cannot see that or come away with that and not give a that's a, I, they get a nod, a salute. Number two, um, when you mention his two misses and his inaccuracy, in, inaccuracy, that's true. Those things are true. But what I what bothers me, regardless of who it is and whoever we're discussing, if you're going to mention the two throws that he missed, then you cannot not mention along with the two throws that he made that went for touchdowns. Or back it up a few weeks when he didn't have Nick Chubb and he didn't throw for no touchdowns, I don't think. Right? And the weather was crappy in the whole nine. Didn't they not come out with a victory? Oh, okay. 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 So then let me read to you what I well, sent. No, let me let me let me read this. Let me read this okay. right. Let me read this right quick. Okay. Passing attempts total are irrelevant when you have a penchant for. To his credit, Stefanski has realized what Freddie, Haley, and Hugh refuse to acknowledge. Dude, talking about Baker, don't need to throw the ball 80 times a game to satisfy, as I just mentioned, fantasy owners every game out. Tailor the offense to his strengths like a coach, as you all have been mentioning, with wherewithal should do for any quarterback. 25 minutes ago, folks was crying about how he was giving the ball away. Now he ain't doing that, which hurts the team the most. Now it's let's see what else we can find. Be grateful for what you do have and not ungrateful for what you don't. Browns look typical in their loss to the Raiders and anything but in the close games thereafter. No bell, Kyle Chubb either? Yeah. Let me get that eight and three. And here's why I said that. It went along with the post. Here are the list. Here is the list of the notable quarterbacks who have thrown more interceptions than Baker Mayfield so far in 2020. Because again, remember last year, what was the talk about Baker? He got to stop throwing interceptions. Wasn't that, wasn't that the talk? Wasn't that all you heard? If right. you listen to mainstream, Brother Rich, okay, if they was talking about the Browns, they were talking about how many, why he, how he keep throwing interceptions, right? Because he threw 20 a year ago, if I'm not mistaken. It was bad. But notable quarterbacks who have thrown more interceptions than Baker Mayfield so far in 2020, Tom Brady, Russell Wilson, Matt Ryan, Jared Goff, Josh Allen, Kyler Murray, Matthew Stafford, Kirk Cousins, Phillip Rivers, Cam Newton, Carson Wentz. Now, all of those names on there might not be pleasurable or palatable to you, but it's more than a few. And they've all thrown more interceptions. Some of them in the MVP conversation, if I'm not mistaken, right? We're just being honest here, okay? There's no bias in this soliloquy of mine. Not today, okay? Not today. So I'm saying, two missed throws? And I'm asking this question literally, Brother Rich. Have you you watched enough football, NFL football? To I'm asking, have you have you ever seen a quarterback? What how many quarterbacks have you seen not miss some throws, brother Rich? Oh, absolutely. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, Double J. How many how many quarterbacks have you seen this season? Some that might even be on your fantasy roster miss throws. Double J. A lot. Oh, okay. Okay. So what I'm, I'm trying to, I, I, like I was asking the people on, on, on the, the what, what are we really talking about here? Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I know. Y'all chide me for the Browns and the, and, and the, what I, the business I be giving them. And a lot of it has got to do with the, ban, the banter and the dynamic that we got going on here. But real spit, I'm going to tell the truth about it first and foremost. You think I'm bad? You should see some of these Browns fans here. They love misery. They're going to find misery regardless. And, you know, you know, I know it's, you know, y'all know it's people like that. Tell me I'm lying. Yeah. 267 is the area code. 6870026 is the number to call if you're up and around, you're out and about, and you want to give us that shout. And, again, as always, we are powered by Rocket Digital Media. Uh, this next one is kind of befuddling or baffling to me. Brother Rich, we'll start with you on this one. It's philosophical, I think, because I, I can't understand it. I wouldn't even classify this as human nature. It's not being said who, whom, however you want to put that. But it was a Ravens staffer. We all seen the stories now, right? That tested positive for COVID. Yeah. All right. According to NFL Network, 
The staff member was a strength and conditioning coach who had failed to report his symptoms and had not consistently worn a mask or a tracking device. I guess that's what they're doing here at the NFL level as required by NFL protocols. The Ravens said in a statement that the staff member's conduct related to the recent COVID-19 cases that have affected players and staff. Brother Rich, what the hell, and I mean H-A-Y-O, was on this dude's mind, man? Well, if unfortunately you have too many people who are not being, not taking this virus seriously, number one. Secondly, these protocols that are in place, one would think that if you're not going to be responsible with your own life, you should be responsible with the lives and the health and safety of others. And it's very it's unfortunate that in a professional environment like that, that A, the Ravens were not more on their watch, and B, that this individual was not more responsible himself. Yeah, I, I, I'm just amazed. It's almost like, or it's akin to, how do you see the bridge is out and you see one guy fall down and then you keep going and you do the same. You ain't learned from – nobody has learned from the Titans and all the other teams who have been, you know, fined for all of – would you not learn? I just, don't, I just don't get it. Double J, help me out here. What was on this guy's mind? And I said minds plural because you got to be a Gemini or something. No offense to all my Geminis out there. I'm just saying. <laughs> you got to be. Or he had different personalities or something going on. What what was the case, man? What explain this to me, please? Help me out. Double J, you there? You saying who? Yeah, I'm oh, asking. Okay. Yeah, I'm asking Double J. Well, you know, I, I'm trying to come up with a reason here. Oh, Why? okay, got you. I, I I don't get it. I don't <laughs> get it. You know, we even if you ha- share those views. Again, those views are, are select, you know, again, subjective to the individual. However, the impact of your decision affects far more than just yourself. So whether you agree with it or not, you have to do what's being asked of you for the sake of, of those around you. So, again, I, I'm just – I'm at a loss um, – Additionally, with this with this particular topic, what what it continues to kind of also leave me scratching my head is the decisions that the league has made when it, it put a, a, a horrible product out on the field for Denver, gave them no time to, to prepare, and meanwhile this game's been rescheduled about you know four or five times now. Yeah, that was that was so disrespectful. I don't even know who the guy was playing. I, I tried to watch that game, man. It wasn't even watchable. From the offensive from the offensive side of the ball for Denver, I mean kudos to that guy for you know stepping up and trying to go out there and make something happen. But man, I just it was laughable. Man, the NFL they need to be slapped for that. To tell you the truth, that was just so disrespectful. Oh, and speaking of which, just want to let everybody know out there that um, the Ravens Steelers game has been it's the Ravens and Steelers right that has been moved once again. It will now be be played at Yorkie Stadium. Uh, that's Brother Richard's backyard out there in California. Uh, seeing how you know you know, <laughs> up in the, he live all in the gated community, anything you know, what I'm saying he got his own soccer field out there. You know, they just draw some lines on. They there. should use Cowboy Stadium since it's not being used for anything serious right now. Well, um, that, you got to talk to the NFL. They said your backyard was more, you know, it's, it's nice out there. You know what I'm saying? They said the sun is shining. You know what I mean? And then something about the Westminster Dog Show was going to be followed by or something or another. So I mean, you know. <laughs> they just out there, they just have, they just out there having a little somewhat of a vacation, I guess. I don't know. I ain't mad at you, bro, Rich. You know what I mean? Show me when when is the book coming out? That's what I want to know, so, so I can follow suit. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm trying to tell you, it's 14 <laughs> inches of snow here in Cleveland, boy. I'm telling you, it's real chilly. It's real chilly. Okay, up next. Um, yeah, I saw that earlier. I thought she was joking, but then I saw that. No, y'all are actually having a snowstorm there. Man, I'm, I feel for all you and all of the people in Ohio. Oh, in yeah. I, yeah, I bet you do. Why are you sipping on a Mai Tai? I got you. Yeah, I'm serious. Yeah, your heart just bleeds. It's just, yeah, yeah, got you. Uh, <laughs> I'm snowed in. My car, I can't even get my, I don't even have a shovel. You know, I live in an apartment building, so 
You know, there's no way for me to get my car out. You know what I mean? I don't barely even know the car is mine out there. There's so much snow out there. And, I mean, when I say it's, it started falling last night, and when I say in a matter of hours, man, it, it was – and, you know, it's a heavy snow. You know, the, the flakes got uh, – they loaded with water. So, you know, once they start falling, you know, and at that rapid pace for a duration – you know, we got power lines down, trees down, all that good stuff, man. But, hey, I'm still here, right? Are we still here to talk about it today? It's all good. It's all to the G.O. Uh, Double J, let me ask you this next one. <clears throat> Why do Bill Belichick's former coordinators, such as yourself and Brother Rich, keep failing as NFL head coaches? I'm sorry you got passed over, Double J, oh, for Dick Vermeil, but go ahead. Did well, you, it's okay. Here, you know, I wouldn't expect anything less. Yeah. Did you did you not want the host. did you not want the Eagles job? Because I heard Brother Rich going down there to Cincinnati. He going he taking over for uh, <laughs> I, don't even, I don't even know who that guy is, but he said he you know he gonna make something happen with Giovanni Bernard. No, but what you say, Double J? What are you saying here? Well, you know, I do want to point this out here before we do move on that the uh, the game that they rescheduled ten times. Uh, couldn't be played in the evening because of the tree lighting in New York. What? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Whoa, 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 whoa. So then I had it wrong. It's the Ravens. I thought it was the Ravens and Steelers game that was being moved. Well, that's right. But it, it was moved to th- 340 in the afternoon as a kickoff because of the tree lighting ceremony that's taking place in New York. So and we'll NBC a- wanted to make sure that they. Oh, you got to be. So what the. Are you. No, don't do that. That's a fact. That did happen. That's that. No, that's after he's telling you the absolute truth. It trended on Twitter earlier. Absolutely. What he's telling they you. moved after the game. Tree lighting. Trump. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Wow. So please make sure you tune into that. <laughs> Are you serious? Oh, you got to be kidding me. Outlandish don't even begin to describe. They moved the a game that had already been moved 1,400 times. This They're not going to play that game until 2044. And Big Ben will still probably be playing. You know what I'm saying? He'll still probably be in the league. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he probably will be. But they're not going to get that game in no time soon. But they moved the game for the tree lighting in New York. Who's going to be there to watch it? Isn't everybody supposed to be? Un- uh, didn't New York go back on some sort of mandate, uh, stay at home order or something or another, Brother Rich? If they, oh, right. yeah, I, yeah, I heard some. I read something somewhere, maybe about a week ago, maybe or four or five days ago. I maybe not a, a full week, but here recently that they were supposed to be going back on some sort of like. So who's going to be there? To light the tree. I mean, who's going to be there to see it? Oh, this is unbelievable. I can't believe that the NFL did that. Yeah, uh-huh, right, got you. Yeah, they moved it. To, but, I mean, again, why do Bill Belichick's former coordinators keep failing as NFL head coaches? Is Bill not giving them all of the information necessary and just enough to keep them around as good coordinators when they with him? You know, sort of like the teacher ain't going to let the st- yes student that. know everything. You know what I'm saying? In, 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 Jay, the the combined regular season record for his assistants as head coaches, 208 in wins, 296 in losses, and one tie. So a 41% win percentage. Oh, that's not good. Again, that it's one thing to say it's from one guy, but again, this has spanned 505 games. That is about as cut and dry as it gets. To, to draw a, a line in the sand and have a hard conclusion that it's not, he's not doing something. Yeah, deliberately holding back information, huh? I'm not going to give it all to you, young fella. Yeah, you're a good student, but I'm not going to tell you all. I'm not going to tell you all the tricks of the trade. We got my man from the CO alum bus. He, he joins us, Gully, or should I say D Gully, excuse me. What's the deal, son? Oh, I thought you changed it into B Gully. When you were telling us earlier, you, you call him B Gully now. Uh, no, B-Gully? I didn't. I didn't tell you that. There you go again. Oh, okay. I thought that, I thought that's what you were saying. I thought that's uh, no, saying. I don't know. I don't know what made you think that. And you need to clean your ears out. Gully, what's up, man? 
I've been gone for a minute, but I'm back, and I can see everything is just as I left it. Yeah. Brother Rich, I thank you so much for reminding me that I'm supposed to be a Bills fan. Double J, you was already spitting the knowledge. I appreciate it. And as always, Barbershop, you holding me down. I'm going to wait my turn, and uh, I'm excited to be back with you guys. Oh, your turn is now. I want you to give tell Brother Richard about the Buffalo Bills because nobody circles the wagons like the Buffalo Bills. Tell him about your Bills because he was hating on your Bills. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you should have heard him. Yeah, he was going in hard. Yeah. Well, what you saying? You don't need to say nothing to him. What's already understood need not even be explained. <laughs> I got you. Well, then might, you might That's want... what I'm saying. I uh, want to keep the train moving. I don't have to re-educate him about the legitimacy of that team that's in New York that's not the Giants and the, or the Jets. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, Buffalo is a New York game. It's on the, yeah, right they there. are who we thought they are. They, they are eight, who we they, thought they are. They eight and three. Now, you don't have to... <laughs> now, I, all right, before we, we dive into that, I'm glad, Gully, I am thrilled. I know I, I, that is going to be echoed from uh, all of us here on the program that uh, the the bill had finally stopped circling the wagon to allow you to get off. Uh, so welcome back. Um, <laughs> regarding this particular topic, uh, one of the, the various reasons that I have is that they're too stubborn for their own good. And that was on full display when it came to Matt Patricia in Detroit here, uh, that he needed his guy, that he wasn't willing to uh, accept the results or the failure that was what took place over these last three seasons because, in his defense, he didn't have the right personnel, and it it was everyone else's fault. With that being said, you could also make that uh, the claim that they don't know talent as well as Bill Belichick does, who seem to, you know, of course there's the Tom Brady's in the sixth round, but it, it almost felt like he would pull guys that were on Cleveland, on Lions, and everywhere in between or in the draft that were, that appeared to be just useless and turn them into all pro uh, and ultimately anchors for his defense and with that being said, does that simply reflect that Bill knows the game better than they do? Um, and it simply makes it look too easy. What, you and, t- of course, let's not forget the other Bill. That being Parcells, if you look at the defensive style, it didn't really matter where Bel- Belichick went beyond uh, the, the Giants and, and the Jets there with the other Bill. It appeared that the style itself, defensively speaking, remained the same. But but you know what though? Let me, so, let me you, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Finish. Well, and the last point I was going to make is simply they don't they don't have a Tom Brady. Who? Uh, uh, well, oh, you t- you you mean the the Lions? The Lions. I'm saying all of them. I was saying. Oh, you talking about the coordinators? The got you. The rationale for why the assistants are not achieving. Uh, any kind of success, is, you know, or at least the perils in comparison to what what their predecessor uh, has done. Or... Mm. I don't know. I I think it's more. So, well, it could be that that makes sense. You know, not having a, a Brady type or a Brady caliber. But I I think the Bill he don't give them the whole kit and caboodle when he over there teaching them. He give them enough, you know, that they can go out and get their own. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Then they gotta. Add- hey, hey, I've got. I- I got a question. I got a question about that. Um, well, that, that well, let me let me let me lacking read. A, a generational talent. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, no, let me read. The, let me read what I the what which um bullet point we're on so that you can get a full scope. Why do Belichick's former coordinators keep failing as NFL head coaches? Gully. Oh, why? Well, um. You know, I think perhaps it's a case that Bill Belichick is such a perhaps a superb football mind that he was able to perhaps successfully articulate what he needed from his coordinators to look at, to focus on, to help maximize his vision. So it wasn't necessarily about growing or developing. It was about maximizing his vision. And sometimes – uh, it could be a case where coaches, um, uh, I, I, it's, a, it's a complicated way to say this, but it, it might be a case of, when we're talking about coaching, it might be a case of Bill Belichick 
um, where the adage is those who can't do teach, but those who can't teach do. So okay. perhaps he can't cultivate. He, he has a, he has the issue here. He maybe he have he has a challenge or unwillingness to be able to cultivate what it is he looks for, so that way he can learn. That way, his his uh his pupils could learn from him what it is. He just knows how, how to execute it. You know what I mean? We can see that it's easier to say that when you talk about perhaps like a performer, if you will, in, in that when we talk about athletes, like for example, how come Jordan has a owner, has a owner or has a uh, executive doesn't seem to be able to have the ability thus far to do, to, to create a team of players like the player that he was, those mm. who can't keep. Do that's what you know. What I'm yeah, gotcha. So when we talk about coaching, perhaps that that that's Belichick's uh, limitation. Uh, you know what? That's an interesting point. It, but let me add something else. Double J. Let me back up a little bit, rather, to something you said, Double J, about Bill Belichick with uh, Bill Parcells. I keep saying it, and I'm going to have to do it at some point. My next off day, I'm going to really sit down and go through all of my books. I got so many. Every time I make my mind up to do it. It's just a daunting task. And I have to say, you know what? I'll do it tomorrow. But yeah, why well, put off for tomorrow what you can do today? Yeah, okay. That's how many books I got. But I have a book written by, Ma- written by Mark Bavaro. And I have another book about the Giants. Lawrence, Lawrence Taylor. I forget what the name of it is, but I got it. Lawrence Taylor. Anyway, in both books, Bill Parcells spoke. And when he and when he spoke, he spoke about Bill Belichick. And he gave Belichick all of the credit for being, for the Giants having the defense that they had. And he gave him a lot of credit for the acquisition or the reason for why Lawrence Taylor ended up being a Giant. Bill Parcells did. His words. He said, people want to give me credit for being this. He said, man, you know, I, I, he said, I, and he talked about analytics, but he didn't use analytics as a word. He said, yeah, man, people talk about the numbers and all that. Kind. He said, man, I just coach guys, you know, if I, cause you know, Bill Belichick, I'm not Bill Belichick, uh, Parcells is the one who drafted and the guy p- ended up dying. I forget what he died from, but he was Mr. Irrelevant. The, uh, what's the, what number is the pick in the draft in the last round, 256 or something like that? The guy picked Mr. Irrelevant or whatever. Anyway, the guy was a hard-nosed football player, but he had to earn his way, you know, on the team or whatnot. Parcells talked about how much he loved the guy. He would say, I was closer to that guy than I was any other player or whatnot. But when he talks about Bill Belichick, he gives Belichick all of the credit for whatever defenses that we all attach and the successes of to Bill Parcells. I'm just saying. And if I, I'm definitely going to pull that stuff up. At some point, and I'm going, you know, do my little excerpts. I have to go back through the chapters and all that kind of stuff. But I do recall Bill Parcells giving Belichick, as far as his mind, he said, "Man, he said when we when we had uh, Pepper Johnson and and um, Harry Carson in some whatever three four one three whatever the five two two whatever they called it, he said that was part, that was Belichick's idea. When we did such and such and such and such such and such." On defense, and we had uh, I forget who the safety was. He, he said that was Bel- uh, that was Belichick's idea. We, he just kept going down the list. Belichick's idea, Belichick's idea. So hey, I don't know, man. Parcells basically made it seem like Bill was not P- Belichick was not his was not a student. Belichick was already Belichick. He just Parcells made it seem like he he was the beneficiary of having Belichick and not necessarily the other way around. If that makes any sense, so. Yeah, you know, to your point, you know, Belichick is just his mind. He just got to. But gotta, wait, but gotta, I think, but but but, uh, but I think uh, there's there's one coach, um, from the Belichick coaching tree that has had success. You gonna say Josh McDaniels? Sustained success, huh? Josh McDaniels? No. Who? No. Nick Saban. No, 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 no. no. Well. Ooh, that's a, that's a good one. I'm, ooh, that's you threw me a curveball right there. That's a good one. Okay, so who are you supposed to be now, Greg Maddox, Gully? <laughs> that what you're doing here? Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. I see what you're doing. So you're not you're not just hurling it. You pitching actually. Okay, okay, I got you. 
I got you. Who I'm going to be? Let me see if I can hit that next curveball. Let me who I'm, I'm going to be Gary Sheffield in this case. Um, Cause you you saying when he was over in Cleveland, isn't that what you're saying? Right, right. Nick Saban was a coach. Yeah, he was on that staff. He was on that that ill fated staff that uh, where, where Belichick didn't have the time to really, um, you know, he was unpopular and 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 the circumstances around the team itself even made him made him even more unpopular. Um, but uh, lacking the time, the proper time to be able to take what he had what he had going on you know his yeah. staff obviously went on to other things and, and and Nick Saban was part of that staff Nick Saban in college now I think your your point though your, your I don't think I don't think Bill them having a grab I'm sorry I don't but I don't think Bill I don't think Belichick had much to do with why Saban was there if I'm not mistaken I think it was Ernie Accorsi put together that staff I I, I, I don't know. I I just I'm I'm going off trying to go off my memory here. I know of course he, Pioli was there too. Belichick, Pioli, okay. Saban. Of course he was the GM though. And that's a good. I got to look that up, Gully. I don't know. Maybe Bill. Let me. Belichick did have something to do with Saban being there, and Saban has had success. But but well, can we say NFL success though? I think that was that's yeah that's the question. Yeah, really. but I'm thinking perhaps that might be the idea that Nick Saban, right? His NFL tenure was marred with uh, it was terrible. Matter yeah, fact, it was with the was Dolphins incident. Um, I think that spelled his doom where we where uh, he had a yeah when he was with the Dolphins and he had a player that um uh, I think fell out injured, and I believe uh, uh, if he didn't lose the locker room before that, um, I think there was an incident of. That player had fallen down injured, and while he was being tended to, Nick Saban just kind of like moved, you know, walked past him and whatnot, and continued business as usual. I guess perhaps that might have been a, that might have been a, a a play on trying to make people understand that you know, business we got to keep moving forward. It was horribly received, and, and he didn't last much longer as an NFL coach. But I wonder if his success at the collegiate level is borrowing borrowing from the philosophies that. Bill Belichick, for some reason, was able to successfully implement at a pro level, but you, but it's very unique. It's like finding a, a Tom Brady, like the okay, I get where you're going. War, bringing that philosophy on, you got to be very careful on how you do it, and maybe that might be the generational thing. You could do it at the collegiate level, but it ain't gonna work in the pros. Okay, that's fair, because because Saban won the championship at LSU too. That's right. He was a winner everywhere he went. Everybody I mean, much went. like uh, much like um, Urban Meyer. You know, he uh, remember Nick Saban was at Michigan State. Right. And yeah, he I took remember that, that program as a football program. He made he elevated that program to to be a, a notable football program, uh, comparatively speaking, when they were a basketball school, if nothing else. Yeah, I, uh, you got me on that one. I can't argue that. I can't argue that. That's a good question. I'm going to have to go look that up and see who had what to do with why Nick Saban was on that 1994 Cleveland Browns staff with Bill Belichick being the head coach. If you're up and around, you're out and about, and you want to give us a shot, we're moving into the second half or portion of the p program today. That number to call is area code 267-687-0026. Once again, that number is area code 267-687-0026. And as always, the shot report is being powered by none other than a Rocket Digital Media. It's the one-stop shop for all your digital marketing needs. All right, fellas, this next one is kind of, mm, I told you so, I didn't tell you so, I don't know, but we've discussed this guy uh, a time or two on the P-Roll Graham, and that is Tom Brady. Now, there's been discussion about, or some people have observed or noticed that after Brady has lost a few of these games here so far this season, he's not shaking people's hands. Well, I'm glad he didn't do that to Pat Mahomes. He, he know better than that, right? He would have really got lambasted. He's been seen slamming his helmet on the ground and such. Uh, Brother Rich, is it time for folks to stop giving Tom Brady a pass for his antics? Because they don't give him they don't give him one. Well, it's been oh, high back time. oh, okay, it's, got it's, you. It's been high time. Okay, got Let's you. Let's be honest. It's been high time. Okay. Let's be honest. 
Okay. Terrell Owens could <laughs> never have gotten away with doing one of those things. Randy Moss. And I could just go on. Antonio Brown could yeah. never have gotten away with doing yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, let, Pat Mahomes couldn't get away with doing that. Uh, let's be honest. Uh, uh, okay. uh, for all that we talk about, Russell Wilson couldn't get away with doing that consistently. Uh, okay. uh, and we know, we know that Cam Newton, who gave balls to little children, was excoriated in the press. He absolutely couldn't do that, and I so I and I don't I don't want to reach in immediately. It, it, it's too easy to reach for the race card on this. So I'm not going to reach for the race card. I'm going to reach for the corporate card. I'm going to reach for the brand card. I'm going to reach for the image card. I'm going to reach for the fact that because I don't believe Baker Mayfield could get away with doing this. So it's not a this is not a race issue. This is a fact of they have decided and everyone decided that Tom Brady is a good guy. And regardless of okay, what Tom Brady gotcha. does or does not do, his brand was associated with being good. No, look at the Cowboys, your team. No matter how <laughs> terrible they are, they're continually referred to as America's team in a branding sort of way. And so you have with Tom Brady. He's the golden goose. He laid the golden egg. He protected oh, the gotcha. brand for so long. He was a good guy. He played in New England. They kept winning. His owner is, is looked at and respected and referred to as Mr. Kraft, and they're seen as this team that has exceeded any and all expectations as a franchise, and they're now a worldwide popular brand. That's the problem you have here. Okay, yes. so Brady got grand- he's the she- He represented the shield for too, too long. Oh, he got grandfathered in somewhat, quote, unquote. But the question is, in that case, Fine. I appreciate you that for saying that, Brother Rich. Is the Bucks? Coach Bruce Arians right in calling out Brady for his recent rash of rookie mistakes is what they're calling it. Brother Rich? Well, if we believe that that's his job, it's to coach him. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Because what Tom Brady, and, I, and, I, and let, me, let, me, let me give a disclaimer here. I believe that Tom Brady, of the mod, of these quarterbacks of his generation, he was the best of them all. And so as he's on his last leg, the reality is that Father Time catches us all. And yeah. it obviously is beginning to catch up with him. His timing is not what it used to be. And so he has to make the decision that if I continue to play, I'm subjecting myself to this kind of ridicule because you're playing and there are uh, 700 cameras watching you every weekend. So any move you make or don't make is going to be recorded for posterity's sake but also for mockery's sake. And this is what we see happening to him, that every mistake he's making is being illuminated and people are, are continuing to make a decision as to whether or not we believe he's fit for duty. Gully, same thing. Good stuff, bro, Rich. Is, is, uh, excuse me, is the Bucks head coach Bruce Arians right in calling out Brady for his recent rash of rookie mistakes? You know, forgot it was fourth down, couple of the interceptions he's thrown, you know, like the one, you know, Baker would have got lambasted for some of the interceptions Brady done threw. Let Baker throw them. Oh, my gosh. Run him out of town. Burn him at the stake. I'm sorry. <laughs> I digress. Right. What you say, Gully? If Bruce Arians calling out his quarterback for his mistakes is inconsistent with Bruce with Coach Bruce Arians calling back – uh, calling out his quarterback Carson Palmer for his mistakes, or um, then, then if it's consistent, then the key is Bruce Arians is doing for Brady the best favor that uh, he could do. He is going to treat him as if he is a quarterback in the NFL, regardless of the year and your tenure and your pedigree and your history. And I'm going to treat you like the athlete you say you are, and I am not going to. Uh, give you a pass based on your your history. And if you cannot handle it, then it's time to think about something else. I have to move forward. I am the coach of this team until I get fired. I don't retire as coach. They fire me, you know what I mean, uh, in, in some respect. So if Brady cannot handle being treated as the peer he seeks to be treated, then that's on Brady. But he ain't uh, – but – Coach Arians isn't wrong for doing what I think is consistent with what Arians would do for a team with the expectations of playing and winning a Super Bowl. We can't have rookie mistakes. I don't care who does it. So, yeah, nothing's wrong with Bruce Arians and what he's doing. You know, Double J, before I come to you, I just want to point something out. We don't have a problem with Greg Popovich getting in Tim Duncan's ass. 
Now, some people will say that's because that's because Greg Popovich didn't won championships. Oh, so wait a minute, whoa, 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 whoa. So that's what it got to be. So, oh, so you got to have rings in order to be able to get get tell a guy, look, man, stop making mistakes. Is that what is that what it is? Is that what the coaching thing is, brother Rich? And I'm not making a statement. I'm really asking a question. You see what I'm saying? You have to be a a, 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 well, a a championship pedigree in order to be able to let a player, a, a star caliber, know. Look, man, okay, it's not just you. You know, you do. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, okay, got you, got you, got you, got you. He should be able to check him. He should be able to check him. Double J, I'm asking you now. Same thing. Is Bucks Arians right in calling out Brady for his recent rash of rookie mistakes? Generally, I'm against calling someone out in public. It does not matter if they won six Super Bowls or were drafted in the sixth. Uh, well, there's a little cliche there. Um, but with him, you have to. And again, the you have theory to what? And, and rationale behind it. You have to you what? You have to call him out. Publicly. Okay, got you, got you, got you. Again, the, the reason behind it is despite everything that, that you all have pointed out about him and the brand, uh, what he's accomplished, these actions, whether they're those particular quote-unquote rookie mistakes or the interception ratio, uh, it, decision-making there, as pointed out earlier in the segment uh, regarding Baker Mayfield, uh, and not shaking hands, these are the things, especially late in your career, that leave a lasting impact about who you are. Because ultimately here, that eulogy is not written by you. It's by others and generally your peers. If you, you know, I don't know if, uh, if you've ever caught any of the Peyton's places or uh, it, just no, any No, I haven't had a chance to see those yet, man. I, I'm telling you, it's, it's Please, when you, when you have a day, just binge watch it. It's, yeah. it's I love it, especially yeah. like you said, you're a fan of football. Yeah. So it, it's nothing but the history. But uh, but regarding this, Brady has to. This is the image that we're going to to remember him most by. You know, this is very much that you know that not that blip on the radar of Montana and Kansas City, uh, or or even Kurt Warner in Arizona. It's going to be, hey, do you, yeah, Brady did all these great things in New England, but Brady in Tampa wasn't shaking hands, so he wasn't a good sport. That's not something, you know, that it, you would want a Pop Warner player to, to take note of and, and duplicate um, his decision-making. Again, you're supposed to be the GOAT. Um, you're throwing, you know, interceptions like Jameis Winston did with the Bucs. So, <laughs> yeah. you know, that's not a good look. Yeah. Um, so no matter how you you know dissect this thing, all of it really does indicate that hey, you asked for a new situation, you got it, but you have to make better choices all all across the board. So I, I'm okay with it, absolutely. Yeah, and you know, last thing I'll point out about this, I'd like to add to something. Go ahead. Um, I like to wonder. I think perhaps uh, Tom Brady. Age could be a factor. Um, certainly, I think age is the biggest culprit, biggest reason for the for the miscues and the mistakes, right? But I wonder if it's being more of a factor because that team still is playing. It has a team. I mean, they still got a winning record. You know, I think it. it I think the what we're what we're uh, what the world is seeing is perhaps a team that if they can get these things together, they're a formidable team. I'm thinking maybe he's in his head a much because these mistakes and these frustrations are happening because maybe in the back of his mind it's happening now because his body is, is, is telling him like, Hey, you know, you don't, you're not the same. And I'm wondering if in the back of his mind, he's thinking I should have left sooner. Well, and I think maybe the the frustration of these, mis- the, the, your, the physical toll that the game is taking on you, knowing you could have did that two or three years ago, and knowing that two or three years ago you probably still had the same desire to separate yourself from the dynasty that was built, and you could have probably made that throw two or three years ago, 
when it could have been more reflective of your talents versus the organization. I think maybe that frustration is probably seeping in and it's bleeding over to other areas of his game. That's a good point, and that's quite possible. How, In addition to that, I won't say however, in addition to that, what I've noticed in watching a few games, and to Brother Richard's point, Father Time catches up with us all. It doesn't appear that he still has the arm strength to go to make them deep throws, to hit that deep ball as constantly or as much as Arians likes. See, so I don't have a problem with Arians checking him on his diva-like behavior. No, you ain't, we're not going to do that here. I'm all for that. But at the same time, I think somewhat of the onus is on Arians, Arians slightly maybe, in that he, he sees he has, what's the receiver's name? Mike, I don't even know. He's got good one. Got one, good one, got one. Mike, uh, what's the, what's his name? Mike, what's his name, man? Help me out here. What's the receiver's name? Mike Evans. Evans, thank you. My gosh, really? Y'all going to just leave me on the ledge like that? I'm not surprised Brother Richard left me on the ledge. He left me like that last time. We wanted to go get ice cream and feed the Yorkie. Um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know them cars was flying past me, man. Anyway, I owe you for that too. But um, I, I think – Arian somewhat got this notion that, you know, I got these weapons, these deep threats, because both of Evans and Goodwin, Godwin, whatever, they, they both can hit, hurt, hurt you deep. So I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a come hell or high water, I'm, I'm going deep. But Brady's arm, and he ain't got it. He, he might have a every now and again deep ball throw in him, but not like, with regularity, like when he was with the Patriots, I think one time they threw 57 straight passes or something like that because they didn't really have a run game, that type of thing. That could have been wore his arm out too. I think Arians needs to, I don't want to say Taylor, scale back maybe. I don't know. He needs to make some adjustments in how he's using, you know, the deep ball with Brady because he the deep ball is not there like it used to be. You know, not 10, 15, maybe 20 times. If he throw 42 passes, you know, and half of them is deep balls, and I'm just picking the number here, just making a point or, or giving an example, then he can't do it like that no more. You know, maybe 10 of them got to be deep. You got to pick your spots or pick your shots going deep nowadays. You know what I mean? I think Arians wants his, his wide outs to have, you know, 14 catches and 222 yards like Tyreek Hill. My gosh, that was insane. <clears throat> he wants his wide outs to have them type of games every game out, and you can't do that. So I think they both need to make some sort of adjustments, both Brady and Arians. Of course, but Arians being the coach and all, he should be making the biggest adjustment, right? Yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. And last but not least for the P-Roll Graham today, it's the question that we've all been, it's the million-dollar question, actually. It's the one we've all been waiting for. Can the Steelers dethrone the Chiefs, Double J? And... Why is their 10 and 0 record being questioned? Of all people, Ryan Clark, Double J, you have the flow. Well, the answer can they beat them or contend and hang with them? I, I believe the answer is yes. Um, mainly because we'll start with, with the quarterback. Um, you know, Ben is not flashy, but if you look at statistically speaking, he's. Uh, set a record that uh, only trailed, uh, I believe, Aaron Rodgers was the closest competitor. So, again, very undervalued when it comes to, to yards and efficiency. Um, he has the young weapons. So, you, one could argue what what Belichick didn't do in New England for Brady is what Tomlin and the Bruneys have done for Roethlisberger by, in, in, by way of uh, Chase Claypool and Deontay Johnson. So you have a, a young group around him. Obviously, James Conner has bloomed as well. Um, but defensively, defensively, that that is the one thing that steel curtain has never changed. They've lived up to it. People have came. People have went. Folks like Ryan Shazier have, have gotten their careers shortened. And naturally, when that would have uh, some impact on the success or plans or future for you know, the, that particular position within the team, and yet here they are. 
So when it comes to offense versus defense, and I will give Kansas City credit that defensively they have been much improved in, in comparison to Andy Reid's uh, system. Yeah, it was that typical. You would generally, they lack. Yeah, and so despite all of that, I believe they can beat them if, despite Mahomes' greatness and the the equal talent that he has around him, I would argue is actually better uh, when it comes to the skill positions. Um, But, again, in my opinion, defense wins championships, and and so uh, I, I would say it would be a very intriguing matchup that could go either way. Yeah, I think that game will come down to who, who ha, who's where it's played at. You know, I know the Steelers better keep winning, and it's just so many doggone Steelers fans here in Cleveland, and they let they will not let you forget about it. You get what I'm saying? They oh my gosh, they out in full force. But brother Rich, we come to you and ask you the same question as well: Can the Steelers dethrone the Chiefs, and why do you think the Steelers being ten and zero is being questioned by? Like I said, none other than folks like Brian Clark, a former Stiller himself. Imagine that. Well, I, I think because it doesn't feel like a ten and one team. That's why. Oh, because undefeated they team. Okay, feel gotcha. like they 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 they, just, they don't feel like a team that's poised to do that old Tiller magic this playoff. And so whether or oh, not that's they a good can point. beat Kansas City, <laughs> absolutely they yeah. can beat Kansas City. But will they? I, I believe, and I, I don't know as much. I say this every week when we discuss football. I have to say this as a disclaimer. I don't know that as much of, uh, as football as you and the rest of the panelists, but I'll tell you what I do know. As long as I've been watching football, the young man who throws the football in Kansas City, I have never seen anyone do that. And I'll continue to say that. That's so I will go with Patrick Mahomes again. Like, so check the tape. We said this last year that they, these are the people poised to do. This young man is poised to show us some things we've never seen before. He, in fact, did that. He's poised yet again to show us some things we've never seen before. He continues to do that. And only some guys in some striped shirts can stop him. Oh, my gosh. Well, way to, way to, way to put a cap or period on that point. I couldn't disagree with you. Not in there one bit. Because the guy is special, no question about it. He's the most special guy at that position in the NFL currently. Gully, can the Steelers dethrone the Kansas City Chiefs? And why is their 10-0 and undefeated season record so far being questioned by folks like, like I said, none other than Ryan Clark? A former Steeler. I'm shocked. I'm I'm sorry. Before I answer that question, um, the 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 producers have just informed me of breaking news news alert. It appears that Barbershop J did in fact a short time ago say that coaching could sometimes negatively affect a player's performance. Based on him saying that maybe Bruce Arians is asking something out of Tom Brady. A coach is asking something out of out of a player that could affect negatively the results that we're seeing. I believe this is breaking news. I'm not certain, Barbershop Jack. Can you tell me? Can you confirm if this is breaking news? Because I don't know if on this program that's ever been articulated. Uh, I'm right now in California uh, counting the dog hairs on the dog. Back to you, Bob. Okay, gotcha. All right. All right. So, um, first of all, let me let me say this. The, the, the first thing that hit me, um, why the Steelers ten and zero record isn't being, let's say, respected. You know why the Steelers ten and zero record's probably not given the um, consideration it should, because they play tomorrow, for example, at three forty in the afternoon. Now, what's the correlation between the Steelers not having? No, no I think uh, that, I think it's been moved. It's been, it's been moved. Double J, did, huh? Double J, it's been moved. The Steelers Ravens been moved from that three forty time tomorrow because of the lighting of the Christmas tree in uh, Rockefeller Park, I guess, or wherever it is in New York somewhere. Right. Right. And, yeah. So I'm, again, yeah. Why that time? <laughs> say, oh, say that again, Double J. 
they moved it from originally the 7:30 kickoff to 3:40 due to the uh, Rockefeller. Oh, uh, okay. I misconstrued you earlier. Right. Okay, so it's being played tomorrow, right? But at a at a yep. at a at 3:40. At 3:40. Okay, go ahead. Continue, Gully. My bad. That was me. I mi- I missed out. I mess I messed up. But go ahead. No, no, that's okay. That's all. That's all part of it. The fact is. This is a this is a weird time in sports, and to to even want to watch and, and 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 you know to watch and, and consume sports because of the 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 nature of what it is the environment we're playing in. So it's I think they got there are the teams that people feel like are the favorites, and the only team that I think should stood should still, despite the situation, be considered a favorite to be a, a contender would be the defending champions because when things were last normal, they look as they looked as good as they were when things were last normal. The Steelers did not. Um and then you got players that are not playing uh because of the because of the pandemic. Uh people are affected by their families or whatnot. So it's easy to see that why that ten and over doesn't look doesn't have the shine that it probably should. Just like, you know, uh we had an NBA champion crown inside of a bubble it's easy to it would be <laughs> yeah. obvious and sort of granted yeah. that you wouldn't validate that championship considering the way it was won in october when the season was last played um when the, you know in resuming the season that stopped in march that being said all these considered they are doing what they need to do one thing about the steelers is that organization stoicism right that is the hallmark of, of a Steelers organization, stoicism. That's for sure. They are always prepared. My, my, I guess my issue is I think if every team in the league, if, the, if things were normal, as prepared as the Steelers would have been, I think other teams may have been better prepared, and I don't know how, I don't know how good they would look. I don't know if they would be 10-0. I think that they, they would be very good, but I'm not certain they would be 10-0. That's, uh, that's the one knock against their, uh, against their record. Can they beat the Chiefs? I just talked about stoicism. They're always ready to play, um, and they always look they always look poised to be able to to make a team play their game, no matter how talented that other team is. Um, I think they can beat the Chiefs. I think they can beat the Chiefs in the regular season. I think they're capable of definitely doing it in the postseason, wherever they play that game, whether it be in, in Kansas City, whether it be in Pittsburgh, whether they find so for some reason uh, they got to play the game in Des Moines, Iowa, for whatever reason. Um, the Steelers are that capable, and I think there is legitimacy to their record being undefeated, uh, though it doesn't have the gloss that it should, doesn't have the shine that it should. I'm with you they all. They can't beat the Bills, huh? Oh, they, yeah, they can beat the Bills. Uh, listen, you know what? They can beat Brother the Bills. Rich, you know what? You know what? Hold on. Yeah, that's, that's, oh. his, that's his thing. This is what he, this is what he does. He sits he sits up all day with his bunny slippers on, okay, brother counting Rich, the hairs on the dog, you, and he come up, he's like, yeah, I'm going to say this this Rich, week. You open this up. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The barbershop. Brother Rich, you open this up by saying to me, the Bills were who we thought they were. Didn't you, didn't you say that to start, right? Yes, right. he did. I can, I can vouch for you. Who let yes. him off the hook then? Finish it out. Who let him off the hook? Who let him off the hook then? <laughs> That's all. What uh, team let him off the hook? Oh, okay. Well, I can't speak to that. I don't pay attention to teams in the up, upstate in New York. They don't exist to me. Oh, wow. Oh, oh wow. Yeah, yeah, wow. You see how he let himself yeah, off the yeah, hook? Yeah, yeah, how he got off the hook. Yeah, 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 yeah. You see how he let himself yeah, off the hook? Yeah, yeah, Listen, That's a pretty that nice was move. That's as good a dodge yeah, as uh, yeah. that one that Mike Tyson threw and War Jones nearly missed in that, um, in that fight. That Mike Tyson had caused him to bite his gloves after because he knew he almost had him. That was as clever a dodge. <laughs> yeah, that was, yeah, that was I, I yeah. What, that was clever. That was a you Floyd Mayweather me. type slip right me. there. Boy, boy, look at Brother Rich over there. He's got the slip game going. Sugar Ray, all right, I see you all day. Uh, speaking of that Mike Tyson, Roy Jones fight, man, oh, man, oh, man, for them guys to be 77 years old and depends being a sponsor, I'm here to tell you, man, it wasn't bad for Fitty. It was a whole lot better for, at 50 than it was 99, 99, 99 for Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao. That's in my opinion, please. And, and please, let, let us not forget my man Nate Robinson. That Jerry Jones money, able, that, that Dallas Cowboy Jerry Jones money, he was able to afford it, huh? Four people <laughs> like us couldn't, couldn't see it, but, uh, I'll, you know, I'll, we had to bootleg it. Oh, I know. I know you ain't talking about poor people like you. Money, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah, okay, got you. Yeah, got you. The man got 12 bathrooms in his house. Anyway. Um, poor people, my ass got, uh, I didn't, I didn't pay for it myself either. You know, 
thanks to Elite Sports Debate, one of the coldest sports groups I'm in, in uh, Facebook, they were streaming it. No, don't tell them. Don't tell them, Barbershop. Got to keep that on the rise. You won't be able to see them again. Oh, my bad. I didn't know I couldn't say that. I mean, it was watched by 25 million people. Oops, did I mess up there? My bad. I didn't know that. (laughs) I didn't know. All I know is I watched it. See, Brother Richard, you see what you made me do? Oh, my gosh. Uh, My last thoughts on (laughs) Yeah, yeah. My last thoughts on the Steelers and Ravens. Really? And Double J, any? Now, that's that's what's interesting. If it was on Facebook, they already know about it. Yeah. If it was on Facebook, they already know. That's what I'm trying to say. But at the same time, any other time I'll say something, you and Double J be right on it. No, stop. No, you can't go. La, la, la. And y'all just let me walk right into that one. But anyway, it's all good. You see what I'm saying? Who needs frenemies? Um, well, see, I was a little upset about it because I'm the one who went through four or five burner accounts in there trying to get a, a new stream up at, between every match. Well, I told you. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> but no yeah. credit from our host. What a surprise. Yeah. No, no, Double J, you know, Double J, he did his best. He did. He really did. He, he went out on the limb. You know what I'm saying? But unfortunately, the. See, and I feel like the idiot. I feel like an idiot for actually paying for the thing. Whoa. <laughs> did you say. You thought what I said a minute ago was bad. You Did you really just make that announcement? Oh, my gosh. Who told you? Well, that's. <laughs> well, hey, look, I told you to count, count your couch change. You never know what it might lead to one day. Uh, the last thing I'll say before we get out of here on the um, Steelers, Chiefs, or whatnot. Can the Steelers beat them? Maybe. Is Patrick Mahomes. The still the X factor, absolutely. But I will say this in regards to the Steelers. Minka Fitzpatrick makes their secondary in terms of coverage. Everybody want to talk about Troy Palomalu. No disrespect to Troy. Troy's best asset, because we were having this discussion, even though they one plays safety and other plays corner. Well, Minka plays a little bit of safety too, I think. I'm not sure. But anyway, Troy's best asset was – at or near or around the line of scrimmage. He was like an extra linebacker. In coverage, you could get him. But Minka Fitzpatrick, go take a look at – focus. look at their secondary. If you watch – you get the Steelers game here, you know, watch. Don't look at nothing on the defensive side of the ball. Look at their secondary. Their second, that secondary is a whole lot better with him back there patrolling the airwaves. That's all I'm saying. I think if the two see each other, which I believe that they will, all things being considered, barn injury and all that other good stuff, I think the two will meet, and I think it's going to be a barn burner. I'm talking about get a wife the credit card, let her go, do get all the kids out the house. I'm talking about make them go outside and play in the snow, lock the door, let's make them stay outside, put the dog out, you know, the cats, put everybody outside because I don't think you want to miss a moment should these two meet up. Fellas, as always, that was good stuff. And I appreciate you for being on the program today. And on that note, it's been fun, but we got to run. We appreciate y'all for listening. Don't forget to check us out right here on the Spreaker.com network. Or you can check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Apple Music, Google Podcasts, and, of course, now iHeartRadio or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. And while you're there, please give us a follow. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, or you can hop on over to the shop's Facebook fan page. And if that don't work... Google it for my dudes, Bro Rich, Double J, and D Gully, and all those who follow and support us. We say thank you. And again, as a last reminder, we are powered by none other than Rocket Digital Media. It's the one stop shop for all your digital marketing needs. You look them up on Facebook at RDM Detroit, or you can go to their website, Rocket, R O C K I T Digital.net, and tell them BSJ sent you. I'm Barbershop J, and been listening to the Shop Report. And remember, the next time y'all want to know what's really going on, man, come to the shop. Walk-ins are always welcome. Holla. <laughs>